Okay, I know we came here to talk about Art Link and, and to see a movie, and so let's uh, move on with that. First, uh, just some quick questions just to lay the groundwork before we start watching the movie. And uh, first question I've got is, why a movie? What, what inspired you to make a movie? Because uh, you're not by trade a movie maker. So what inspired you to make a movie? Well, <clears throat> I've had this experience of getting a chance to work with Ken Burns and some other um, documentary filmmakers, and the, you know, the, it's the sort of the same theme, Larry. The, the, the electronic revolution has reduced the costs of this sort of thing by magnitude, so it's really now possible if you have a, say, a Mac computer with Final Cut Pro on it or a PC with any number of film editing um, softwares, people like you and I can actually do some rudimentary filmmaking. And so I've been wanting to do this for a long time because you know, books are still really important, but the, visual, the visualization of history is really a, um, an important part to the future, I think. And so when I came back, the first thing that I did was walk into um, Makoche Studios to talk to David Swenson. I've been an admirer of David Swenson's for a very long time. You know, they've done this sort of magnificent recording of native voices, uh, narrative, song, etc., and have won awards for it. And so I said, I went in to see David Swenson, and I said, I want to find a way to, to learn from you and work with you. And he was generous enough to say yes. And so we got to talking. We did a little tiny little piece about the Ebert's Ranch, um, the Elkhorn Ebert's Ranch. And then we decided, let's, make, let's start making documentary films. So mm -hmm. just about that time, I went to a Lewis and Clark related function at the Ramcota, and Art and Grace Link were there. And Art came up afterwards and said, I've been wanting to talk to you about the future of North Dakota. And so we then started talking, and I realized, you know, that this, first of all, that Art Link is 94 years old now, and he's still in the arena. You know, I can't imagine where I'll be when I'm 94, but I'm pretty certain dead, you know, but... <laughs> but here's this man who's, who's been in public life for 50 years, and he's reached the point where his, his body is no longer as strong as it once was, and yet he's still very intensely interested in what's going on in North Dakota and very concerned about the future. And it turns out that his concern is that as this second gigantic energy event occurs on the northern Great Plains, Bakken gasification, liquefaction, etc., that it's not clear that we're going to have the same ethical restraint that we showed in the 1970s. And so then I, so then I, I went to David Swenson and said, let's make a film about Art Link so that he can voice his concerns. And the film morphed into all sorts of different things. It's not quite the film we at first... I don't think they ever really are what you at first intend, but you know, th you'll see. If, if you haven't seen the film, you're in for a great treat, I think. Art Link is one of, the, uh, he's one of my heroes. I think that, frankly, Art Link saved North Dakota, not alone, but he was the leader. He staked, you know, in 1973, during the first great international energy crisis, North Dakota was I encouraged to be a, an energy sacrifice zone for the country just to sort of say, have at it. Come on in, develop these resources. We understand the importance of it. And Art Link said no. He staked his whole political career on it, all of his political capital, he, and essentially he staked his life on this. This is what leadership is, and said, that doesn't sound like North Dakota to me. If we're going to do this, and we will do it, let's do it, let's do it right. Let's have proper controls. Let's, let's go slowly. Let's make sure we have reclamation laws in place. Let's make sure that we don't tap our water supplies unnecessarily. Let's, let's find a responsible stewardship model of developing an extractive enterprise like coal development. And thanks to the lead that he took, I think he arguably changed the course of that stream. And so 
Then, and then you'll see from the film, and then we, they may, we should probably just show the film here, but yeah. <laughs> you'll see from the film that he gave this speech. He gave, he, he, first of all, he coined the phrase one-time harvest. He said, we do not want a, quote, one-time harvest. If you think about that, you could not have chosen a better three-word phrase for North Dakota. We all get that a wheat harvest is every year. The cattle have calves every year, etc. And Art Link's, his attitude was, we have to have sustainable harvests here. We can't have a one-time harvest. So first of all, he coined that marvelous phrase. And then he gave a speech on October 11th, 1973, over in Mandan at the, at the Seven Seas Motel at an REC meeting at a banquet. And he had, he had a speech just right here in front of him that had been typed out for him. And while he was waiting to give it, he suddenly realized that it wasn't what it wasn't really what he wanted to say. And so he wrote in the bottom of the text, in the, in the white space there, he wrote out what he really wanted to say. And that's the speech that is the centerpiece of this film. And it begins when the landscape is quiet again. And the, just to sort of prep you for the film, so we wanted to make that the center of this. And we asked every one of the people who was in the film to talk about it. And you'll see they just were magnificent. But then at, towards the end, I wrote to Garrison Keeler, who is a, he's not a friend of mine, but, he's, but I know him, and I've worked a little bit with him. And so I asked him if he would be willing to voice the speech, and he said, sure. So now the film opens with Art Link's When the Landscape is Quiet Again being voiced by the, the number one you know, voice, really, in America. Garrison Keillor. So that's, the film is really about a remarkable man and his remarkable wife. They'll be married 70 years this month. 70? <laughs> I got 11. <laughs> you know. 70 years. And his leadership, the speech, and it, but it's also the story about, in a sense, it's a quintessential North Dakota pioneer story. Art Link is the son of an immigrant. His father and mother came from the Sudetenland, and he went on to become the governor of North Dakota. Think of that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really a remarkable story in a whole range of different ways. And uh, my role in it was to, you know, to do the interviews. But the the beauty of the film, the great strength of the film, is uh, David Swenson's videography. It's just heartbreakingly beautiful. It's just, uh, he did marvelous. So Should we watch, watch it? Yeah, let's watch Let's it. do that. A couple quick things. First of all, I mean, it's Art Link. What an, ex what an extraordinary story that Art Link um, is that sort of a person. You see it, the, the romance between Art and Grace Link in their 70th year together. And that kiss at the end is just so moving that, um, I mean, it, you know, it's hard, it's hard not to just be uh, overwhelmed by something like that. The videography by David Swenson, just magnificent. Produced by David Borlaug of Fort Mandan. You know, I'm working with the Dakota Institute and the Fort Mandan uh, Foundation and the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. And David, I had the idea for the film, but, you know, these things cost money and they take an enormous amount of uh, administration and David stepped in and said, let's do this. And he's the one who made it possible to do it. And then the people, you know, Jim Fugley, he's sort of the Shelby foot of this film. Mike Jacobs is the heavyweight, <laughs> the critic, you know, but just the, you can see in everyone who spoke about Art Link that, that they, it inspired them to really strain to try to say what an extraordinary man he was. Yeah, I had a list of questions I was going to ask, but you know, I'll bet you that uh, folks out here have some questions they would rather ask than listen to us well, I'm sure talk that's up true. here. And I, I, so I would just like to open if it up. But if we could turn up the lights a little bit, Dean, please. If anyone has a thought or a question, or if anybody wants uh, to ask Clay a question on this film, or some folks might have something to remember our link about and want to stand up and share with the rest of us, we'd appreciate that too. Don't be bashful. You start. Okay, right. well, it's pretty quiet. Wait, right. Yeah. What do their children do? Mm -hmm. the, uh, they had six children, and um, one was a daughter. Uh, five were boys. The daughter um, died a number of years ago of cancer. 
Um, two of them are farmers up on the old homestead up in uh, Mackenzie County. Uh, Harvey is the Vice President of Academic Affairs at uh, Wapaton State School of Science. Uh, there's a son in uh, business in the Illinois area and a son who's also, I think, in agricultural related business down near the Twin Cities. So. Yes? <laughs> well, that's a really good question, Jill. You know, when, when I first said, when, when he first approached me, he didn't want to do a film, he just wanted to talk about some things. And so when I first conceived of this, I thought it would be called Conversations with Art Link, and we would, I, it would be more of a Charlie Rose sort of thing where I would just be the interlocutor and he would speak. And then when we, so then we, it turned out that that wasn't going to work out for a number of reasons. And so then I approached him and said, what if we did a documentary about when the land, the speech, when the landscape is quiet again, and it took a long, long time to convince him to do it. And he did, you know, he's so humble that he didn't really want to do it. And finally, David Swenson and I, um, with David Borlaug prompting us, uh, realized that it was old settlers' days up in Alexander, and the links always go, and they're of course always um, beloved when they get there. So we just went up with a camera. <laughs> and got out of our car, and Art said, so you won't give up. <laughs> and so then he just said, well, okay, but, you know, we'll, but he was very reluctant. And, you know, one of, the, one of the greatest moments of my life, Larry, was at the Bell Mayhew when we did the big um, uh, premiere, and Art and Grace were there, and they were sitting up in one of those little boxes on the side. And we showed the film, and afterwards, um, I came up on stage, and all I said was, ladies and gentlemen, Art and Grace Link. And the crowd just rose in unison. And it was just like the roof was coming off that building. And then you know, Art and Grace stood up, and you know, Art has to really struggle to get up now. And the ovation was a couple of minutes long. And it was just, you could just see that the people of North Dakota get it, that even if their politics are different on major questions of energy and so on, they, they, first of all, they recognize his authenticity, that there's no one can really question it. Even Mike Jacobs, you saw, who wanted to question it, turns out he's drawn in by that oil story too. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, so that you cannot fundamentally question Art Link's authenticity, whether you agree with his politics or not. And then the, the, the sort of the dignity of the man. I mean, I, I, it's hard to think that there could ever be another governor in North Dakota history who quite has that sense of rootedness deep in our soil. And so it's partly about Art Link, but he, I think Governor Link realized it's about something bigger than Art Link, and that's why he agreed to do it. Yes? How did uh, Alan Olson defeat Art Link? Well, Alan Olson is a good man, and, and he was younger. Uh, he was more dynamic. He was more articulate. I mean, Governor Link was always a quiet man, and he was not a, you know, as, as Senator Dorgan said, you know, he's no Elvis. And in 1980, there was a sea change in the United States. Uh, Ronald Reagan was elected. Uh, we've been living through the Reagan revolution period until at least until this election and there was a big big shift in America's basic value system and Governor Link was perceived at that time as having as being a little um, out of touch and not quite dynamic enough for the things that were unfolding in North Dakota life and the 19 year old drinking bill which he had vetoed hurt him and so there were a number of things, but you know, an Al, but but Alan Olson deserves credit. He ran a good campaign, and he was dynamic, and he and he was a he he spoke of the future of North Dakota at a time when North Dakotans were, you know, I think, ready to move on. He, it turned out he wasn't a great governor of North Dakota, but that wasn't that wasn't knowable at, during the time in the campaign. Miss back there. No, he, when he ran for governor in 1972, he was a U.S. congressman. 
He, he had one term in the United States Congress in the House of Representatives as a West District Congressman from North Dakota. So he had, in 1970, he had become a, a, a U.S. Congressman and, you know, he might have followed that path. A few terms in, in the House followed possibly by a Senate career. Uh, but then in 1972, um, he decided to come back to North Dakota to stand for governor. And the sense you get from listening to people like Senator Dorgan is that he was an able, a very able congressman, but that his heart wasn't in it in quite the same way as being here in his own soil. So that he came back and, you know, you have to rush a little in these films, but 72 was the year that Nixon defeated McGovern just by almost unbelievable majority. And McGovern, standing for president, lost even in South Dakota. And so this would have been a very difficult time for Art Link to be elected governor. And, and the state was a little weary of the Democrats because uh, Bill Guy had been governor for 12 years. And suddenly, after Bill Guy, who was sort of a Kennedy-like figure, um, you know, the, we're making a, doc, a documentary about him now, too. And it, the title is going to be The Charisma of Competence. And he really brought North Dakota into the second half of the 20th century, the interstate highway system and public education and reform in government and a, a certain kind of confidence in the, in the American arena, and then follow that by a much more low-key son of the soil. It was very un, unlikely that, that Link would win that race, but he did. And, and you know, we can all be thankful that he did. Yes? That's a good question, Mike. I asked him about that because that's one of my favorite themes, the you know, Native, relations with Native Americans. And he talked a little bit about it. He, he was a well-liked, well-respected figure up in Indian country. And, and he was, I think he was, I was at a powwow for the North Dakota Humanities Council in 1973 or four when he was, he was the um, lead dancer in the first ceremonial dance at a powwow in Newtown. And the three affiliated tribes adopted him and gave him the name Chief Charging Eagle. And he had a, played a role there. And he was, he, was a, he was a 20th century modernizationist. He wanted Native peoples to have the blessings of um, American industrial civilization, as we understood it then. And, but he, he was. He tells a really moving story that didn't make it into the film about prejudice up in Mackenzie County and how an Indian was being put forward for a county position. And the other county commissioners were very negative about this, and it was clear that they were being racist. And Art championed him and said, you know, if he has merit, his background shouldn't matter to us. And, but we, we didn't develop, there's a, there's a whole set of issues that we didn't get a chance to develop. You know, garrison diversion, uh, reservation life, uh, the heritage center. I mean, there are lots of things that one would want to do in a longer film about our link, but we wanted to focus on the land ethic in this one. Any other thoughts or questions? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. 
Well, we should probably. Anybody else? Yeah, you know, if anyone else has a thought, but you know, we don't have to keep people in. Only I just <laughs> want to say one thing about this, though, and that's, you know, you heard Bob Valu towards the end saying, and here we go again. Here's another energy boom. And one of the questions that I think is really worth asking is where, and where it's not where Governor Link is now, it's where is that voice? Where's the voice of stewardship, sustainability, restraint, caution, long-term values rather than short-term game? And I'm not saying we haven't benefited mightily from the environmental standards of the United States government and from the state, but we're in for a bigger industrial revolution in North Dakota than we had in the 70s now. The Bakken oil field is one of the world's great oil fields. And if, if 4.3 billion barrels of oil are going to leave the state, they're going to go by pipe, they're going to go by truck, they're going to go by train. That's going to be just an unbelievable transportation infrastructure. There's almost certainly going to be more, well, there certainly will be more coal-fired generation plants. There will almost certainly be more gasification plants. The chances that there's a gasification plant within the view shed of Interstate 94 near South Hart is pretty high. There's going to be just unbelievable pressure in the next half century for North Dakota to play its part. And we are going to benefit from this. Our surplus, which has just been used, I think, in very interesting ways by the legislature, comes from energy development. So it's, it's not as if this isn't going to happen, but the question is, where is the focal point in our politics, state, local, or national, to make sure that we do this in a really, really intelligent way so that 150 years from now we can look out and see that scenery that David Swenson captured so beautifully so that the landscape, so that North Dakota is still this sort of windswept, vast prairie and not a cluttered industrial landscape, say like Gillette, Wyoming, or Coal Strip, Montana. And, and Art Link did something really brave. He staked his political career on this. He could easily have been um, retired in 1976. He was reelected. I don't, I frankly don't see that, I don't see that cluster of, of ethics in, embodied by any single figure or even a group of people at a major power level in North Dakota today. So one answer would be, well, we've got the sustainability restraint reclamation software, maybe that's just fine. But I think we probably need more people like Art Link saying, what's, what are our deepest values? What are our... What's eternal in North Dakota life that we should, be, should always be in the equation, no matter what we're doing in development? And so it, it troubles me a little, Larry, to think that that was sort of a warm-up act, really, for what's about to happen. And I, I'm not sure that, I, and I have a lot of respect for the current governor and our three national figures and so on. I'm not trying to criticize anyone. I'm just saying I don't hear from a major power figure a voice of caution and moderation as we move into this new era. Well, maybe your making this film can inspire all North Dakotans, and hopefully more will see it, and all North Dakotans to, to ponder that question. And, and uh, maybe out of that, there will be a phoenix of leadership that will come forward on, on that very issue. And I certainly want to thank you for putting this together and, and making it possible for us on this beautiful spring afternoon out here. And I won't use any more analogies about <laughs> how the spring is, um, this beautiful Good. spring afternoon. And what we'd like to do now is uh, we're going to go out here and we've got a spot for Clay to sit out here. And if any of you want copies of this, and Clay will autograph them for you. They're and, free uh, and Shyla Schaefer played a coincidental role in I, that. I'm on a gag order but, here. I, but just one last thing, Chuck Suki uh, volunteered to write the song for the film, Father of Us All, and uh, what a marvelous, to get North Dakota's supreme troubadour to right. sing a song of love to North Dakota's yep. great figure of the earth. That was a marvelous. And a graduate of Bismarck State College, an alumnus of the year. That's it, that's it.